OutRun, the iconic arcade racer developed by Sega and Yu Suzuki in 1986, is now available in a mini sit-down cabinet from Arcade 1UP. It also comes with some good friends in tow. Get ready! I've had this machine for a couple of weeks, and my goal with this in-depth review is to cover the arcade 1UP hardware and emulation, and not the games themselves. I created this review detailing everything I wish I knew before I dropped $550 on it. Hopefully this will help you make a decision on whether or not this cabinet is for you, or maybe you'd like to wait for the stand-up model releasing in 2021. I know I wish I did. First of all, let's take a look at this thing from face value. It looks bloody good in my opinion. It's definitely a mishmash of the different cabinet styles from 86, in addition to some original designs that work really well to capture that 80s aesthetic. The light-up marquee is a great look, it really sends home that authentic arcade feel. The dashboard has a map of the original game, which is a nice touch. And you set your drink here, but I personally don't trust myself to do that considering all the electronic guts beneath. So, it's not a one-to-one -one recreation by any means, but any casual fan will find it pleasing. The steering wheel and gear shift look a bit small, but they are scaled to this particular mini cabinet, so it doesn't bother me that much. One thing you might have noticed while watching this footage is that there's no Sega logo anywhere to be found. From what I've read, Sega has a policy that won't allow their logo to appear on hardware that they themselves do not manufacture. There's also a lack of any Ferrari branding featured on the original, but Sega hasn't paid for the Ferrari license since the mid-2000s, so I doubt it was worth it for Arcade 1UP to pay it either. Modern releases of OutRun have taken the Ferrari logo off the back of the vehicle anyway. It was a rather easy three-hour setup. Anyone with IKEA experience and a couple of screwdrivers can handle it with ease. Hooking up the electronic components was pretty simple as well. Just four cables were involved. Pedals, dash, speakers, and power. How does this thing feel to play? Let's start with the centerpiece of the cabinet, the analog steering wheel. It feels absolutely fantastic. It feels just right with the rubber coating and it's 120 degrees of motion. It's overall the most heavy duty and solid component in this cabinet. Now this isn't a modern force feedback wheel, however it is weighted and it always comes back to center. It's also quite sensitive, detecting even minute movements. Now, not all the titles will take advantage of the full range of movement or sensitivity, but it doesn't really detract from the experience at all. You can adjust the sensitivity and calibrate the wheel as well. It was supposedly calibrated before shipping, but when I first started playing, I was oversteering like crazy. Turns out it was only calibrated to about two-thirds the range of movement. I calibrated it to the full range and found it to be an incredible improvement. I highly suggest that you use the calibration menu before starting any games. I would like to add that playing these games with analog controls feels so damn good. Much better than the digital controls of the home versions. You can smoothly accelerate without peeling out as much and ultimately saving a little time. If you smoothly turn from 0 to 120 degrees on the route changes, going full speed you won't screech your tires at all, which I don't think I've ever seen in any of the home releases. It's overall very satisfying when you're able to finesse these controls. The gear shift, on the other hand, is a little disappointing. It's this lightweight plastic that toggles a couple of micro switches. I would have loved to have seen a heavier shifter that stays in position like the arcade original. It would have also been a nice extra visual indicator of what gear you're in. On occasion, when I forgot, I would find myself accelerating in high gear. However, with the inclusion of Outrunners, they had to make some sort of compromise with the gear shift. As Outrunners features vehicles with 2-6 to six gears, so they simply made a micro switch shift up and down. And of course for Turbo Outrun, they have a turbo button. This is probably the cheapest feeling button of the group. But overall, the gear shift gets the job done, and it works just fine after you get used to it. But I think it could have been better and higher quality. I could maybe see someone with decent upper body strength snapping this in an intense session, particularly if there are adult beverages involved. The other buttons are the start button, the music selection buttons. These aren't anything special, you don't use them for gameplay, and they serve their purpose just fine. It should be noted that the music buttons only work with Outrunners, though. Another disappointment is the pedals. They also feel very thin and cheap. 
I can also see these breaking down over time, especially for someone like me who's just over 200 pounds. On the positive side with these pedals, there's a resistive spring on each, so you get some good, realistic feel to them. They don't push back a lot, but it's just enough to give you the feel of an actual pedal. Also, these have a great range of sensitivity just like the wheel, just not the amount of movement range. It takes a little bit of getting used to to finesse the controls and accelerate properly, but after a while you get used to it. Of course, it also features an on and off switch for, you know, turning it off and on. It also has a volume toggle, which has this nice CRT display on the screen. The 17-inch screen is pretty good, nice and bright, although I wish you could adjust the settings. It runs the games at a resolution of 720 by 960 which is all you really need for these 16 and 32-bit titles. They appear to be square pixels with no shimmering. The built-in speakers sound much better than I thought they would. They have a good punch to them and they aren't super tinny like the size would suggest. Now this is Arcade 1UP's first sit-down racing cab, and it is in fact a sight to behold. I'm glad that the bench is detached and can be slid in. And that's where the positives end for this thing. The biggest issue of this entire product is the ergonomics of the whole thing. For most of the middle-aged men who will be purchasing this will have some issues. So I put a lot of work into this thing to make it not painful to play for more than 30 minutes. First of all, there's no back to the bench. So I got this bleacher seat with a back and it fits great and it gives you that much needed back support. Link in the description. The dash of the cabinet sits so low that you can't get your knees under it. To remedy this, I set it up on bricks to give myself an extra 4 inches or so. It's not pretty, but it's functional. I've also added a 10 pound sandbag just for a little extra heft and stability. So after all that work, it's much more playable for a grown man. So if you're interested in the sit down model and you're 5 foot 7 or taller, be prepared to do some similar work to make it comfortable to play, unless you're a young person with a good back. So now that we've got the hardware covered, let's talk software. The main menu is simple and clean. When you select a game, you're greeted with a control splash screen, which is nice, even though they're all the same. You select the games with the steering wheel, which is kind of awkward. I think I would have preferred the music buttons, honestly. Anyway, you hit start or gas to select an option, and to select the settings, you hit down on the gear shift, which is also just weird. The options presented are pretty standard. Difficulty, more or less time, erase high scores, gear indicator, demo sounds, and scan lines. I've left the scan lines off for this review because they don't look great on camera, even though I typically leave them on. So now, on to the emulation. Let's start with the star, 1986's OutRun. Let me start by saying I haven't played a ton of the original cabinet for this game, probably not since the mid-90s. So some of the issues I'm going to bring up may be from the original version, the majority of my OutRun play has been with M2's excellent Sega Ages releases on the 3DS and Switch. The emulation here has been done by Code Mystics. My experience with them has been pretty good. I own a few of their Neo Geo ports, so I wasn't worried about the emulation quality going in. So, as mentioned before, the Ferrari logo has been removed. But, as far as I can tell, there haven't been any other changes to the ROM. It runs at a locked 30 frames per second, just like the original. Unfortunately, I have run into one issue. Frequently when passing a checkpoint, the color palette of the vehicles glitches for a frame, and I find it to be pretty annoying after a while. It might not be distracting to you, but it got irritating to me. One note I do have with this game in terms of gameplay is it is much more difficult than the M2 versions. This is definitely arcade difficulty. It wants your quarters. So far, after dozens and dozens of runs, I've only completed the B route twice. So if you're dead set on getting to the end, you can really only afford one crash in the entire run. So I've never played Turbo Outrun in the arcade, so I can't really say how accurate it is. I haven't noticed any issues based on what I know about the game, so let me know in the comments if you see anything wrong with Turbo Outrunners from the footage. Outrunners is mostly the same, the only thing that may be an issue is what you might call screen tearing on the recap map, but this could also be like a side effect from the scaling effect that they use a lot, so I'm not sure. So if you've played Outrunners, let me know if that's the case. The only other thing that stands out about this title is the audio is significantly louder than the others. I typically turn the volume down a notch or two before I start this one up, it's very loud. Power Drift on the other hand I know a little bit better. 
The only issues I've noticed were a couple of sound issues. There's one short music track that's not being emulated properly, it's a little bit crunchy. And sometimes the sound of an opponent's engine will linger when switching tracks or the continue screen pops up. Other than that, it's not bad. So, unless you're a big emulation purist, the system does quite well at emulating these games, and I'm overall satisfied with the results. So, final thoughts. Despite the flaws with this system, I still really like it a lot, especially after all the modifications I've made so far. Would I recommend it? No. However, I would recommend the stand-up model, no question. If you need a number rating to go off, I would give this 3.5 flagmen out of 5. So if you're a huge OutRun fan like I am, there's no question that seeing this thing every day gives me incredible joy even when I'm not playing it. I'm not sure about the longevity of these 1UP cabinets because they're still kind of a new product, but it seems pretty solid and I can't wait to keep making it better. I personally purchased this as a starting point for a larger project and I think it's going to go really well. So that's that. What do you think about the Arcade 1UP OutRun sit-down cabinet? Is there something I missed in the review? Feel free to ask me in the comments. Thanks.